what I'm going to show now is how to build, publish, uh, and publish a document understanding model. And document understanding models are really suited towards unstructured data. So in the example I'm going to share, we'll look at benefit change notices. Uh, here's an example of the type of file that we're going to build a model to understand. You'll see it's it's unstructured. Um, I can't say for the data I want to pull as metadata where that might appear in the document. It's just a block of text. So the exercise we're going to walk through now is how to use a small set of examples of this file type to build a model that will use AI to automatically extract key pieces of data. I'm going to begin in the content center, which is the new site template that Sean was just describing and um, use the content center to build my document understanding model and then publish it to one or more SharePoint libraries. I'll, I'll talk about the UI way of, of publishing models in, in my section of the demo, and then we'll talk about some of the options over APIs and through PowerShell uh, with Burp in a couple of minutes. So let me start off by creating a new document understanding model. I'll give it a name. And I'll quickly point out that we do have the opportunity to associate this either with a new content type, or if we have an existing content type we want to make more intelligent, we can take our document understanding model and snap it to uh, an existing content type. We've also got the option here to associate a retention label um, with my model. So in this case, I'll grab the confidential label. So whenever a benefit change notice is processed by Syntex using this model, it not only will classify it and extract the metadata, it will stamp the confidential label on there as well to preserve the lifecycle of the file. When we're building a document understanding model, there are four steps that we walk through. So first we upload a training set of files. Then we build something called our classifier. And that's going to say when a file is executed against this model, is it a benefit change, yes or no? Or is it another file type, like a, such as a contract or a statement of work? How can we make the determination whether it is or is not that file type? And then we have one or more extractors. And the extractors are what's going to take specific pieces of text, specific entities from that document, and promote them as metadata in my SharePoint library. And then finally, I publish the model. So I associate it with one or more SharePoint libraries or have multiple models running on a single library. Let's start off by adding our files. So I've got um, a small data set here. Um, what's interesting with SharePoint Syntax to contrast it with other similar technology that some of you might have worked with in the machine learning space is that we only need a pretty small data set. So unlike machine learning where you might be working with um, hundreds or thousands of okay. again. Um, with machine learning where you might be looking at hundreds or thousands of labeled files. When we're working with ah, it's because I've got a file open, that'll be why. When we're working with SharePoint syntax, we only need a small number of files, a minimum of five. And what we're going to do through the process is less around getting AI to analyze the data set and find patterns. We're going to use this small data set to walk through an interactive training process. So the idea is that I, as an expert in this type of content, I'm going to use the model to impart my knowledge. I'm going to teach the AI, and the AI is then going to be able to understand the content uh, going forwards. As a bare minimum, minimum, we need five files to teach a document understanding model. As a mixture of positive examples and negative examples, in my case, I've got 14 files. So. 12 examples of a benefit change and two uh, statements of work to give the AI an example of something that isn't a benefit change. Now I've got my data set. I'll move on to the uh, classifier. And when we work with document understanding models, I, I really like to use the language of teaching. So imagine you're teaching a human being and the same steps you'll go through are what we do when we're teaching the AI, when we're teaching syntax how to build a model. So yeah, I've got pretty small children. So when I'm teaching them how to do things like recognize shapes or animals, first I'll show them examples, and then you'll explain the difference between them. So um, maybe if I'm teaching them the difference between a dog and a cat, uh, my children are very small, so that's the level we're at. I'll show them some pictures of dogs, some pictures of cats so they can identify the difference. And then maybe I'll, I'll start to explain the difference. So dogs might tend to be bigger or cats can climb trees and dogs can't. I'll, I'll point out the attributes of both um, to help them work out for themselves in the future. 
We're going to do exactly the same with syntax. First, we're going to give examples. Um, in this case, we're going to label some of the documents, and then we're going to explain how we came to that conclusion. We'll use what we call explanations to provide additional context. And syntax will use a combination of those explanations and the labeling that I do to build the model. I'm looking at the labeling interface at the moment. On the left hand side, you'll see the files that I have in my training set. And on the right hand side, a preview pane of the file. Now, for the preview pane, we've hidden all of the rich text, um, all the rich formatting from the document. We're only interested in the text when we're training syntax. So to make the training process easier, we've we've hidden out all that rich detail. I could hit the view original button um, to get into that original version of the file at any time. But for now, we're only interested in the text. And it's a pretty simple step for labeling. I need to go through at least five of these files and say yes or no, whether or not it is an example of a benefit change. So I'll just grab four positives and one negative. Next is training. So again, I've given my, ex uh, my examples. Now I need to show my thinking, show my working out. And the explanations are interesting. When I explain this to customers, oftentimes they get uh, bogged down with other technologies they're used to and trying to apply some of those thinking patterns to syntax. So they'll think of explanations as being regular expressions or different types of query statements. You're having to build rules that will say exactly where text appears within a document. And the reality of syntax is that's, that's not the case. What explanations are, are hints. They're suggestions of how the AI might identify documents or the attributes in them. Again, think about how you're teaching a person. You won't necessarily explain to a person how many characters into a document a particular phrase is. You'll tell them where you might identify a phrase or the type of language you'll see in a document that tells you that it's a benefit change or a contract and so on. So for this example, I can see I have a fairly consistent phrase of the language benefit change notice appears in my documents. So I'll create an explanation that's a phrase list showing that type of language. This isn't to say that that phrase has to appear in every document, but this is an example of the type of language that will indicate that it's a benefit change. And Syntex will use this explanation plus the labeling I did in the first step to, to help build the model. On the bottom, you can see for each of the files I've labeled, we've got um, the predicted label and an evaluation. So the evaluation is what the AI would do based on the instructions it's being given. So does it agree with me, yes or no, as the trainer? And you'll see we have five out of five matches. So for now, my model is 100% accurate. So for the classifier, um, the AI agrees with what I would do as a human expert. I can move to the testing stage and um, use the rest of my data set to do some more testing. Now, that was a pretty simple example. Let's move to an extractor to show you something a little bit more complex, like ramp up the complexity just a little bit. So when I create extractors, they map to the columns which will exist on the SharePoint library that I published to. So I can create many extractors. Each one will be a separate column. In this demo, I'll just create one for time, but you'll see some of the ideas here. So again, I can map this to either a new or an existing column. I can set what data type I'm going to be extracting from the particular file. In this case, let's grab the effective date um, of the contract change. And this might be useful once we extract the metadata for doing things like triggering some automation. So we might need to do um, notifications based on that date. We might want to sort or filter or build a view formatter on the library, which is using this date column to provide some improved navigation and readability. Again, um, we go through two steps. We label and then we explain. This time, though, you'll see on the preview pane on the right, rather than label the entire document, I'm going to select the specific piece of text that I would expect to be extracted. In this case, the effective date. I'll label all positive examples and one negative example where we don't have an effective date. and move on to my training stage. Before I start to build some explanations, just notice on the right hand side, we've still got a blue highlight on the on the preview. And that shows me what I labeled in the first step. As I start to layer on explanations, we'll also see a green highlight 
on the uh, on the preview. And the green highlight shows what the AI would extract from this document. And we want to see the two things match up. We want my labeling and the AI's prediction to be exactly the same, showing that I've given enough explanations, I've given enough context to the AI to do a good job. Because we're dealing with a date, let's start with one of our template explanations. This will grab a numeric date uh, pattern match so that we know we're extracting a date. You'll see that's evaluating based on the instructions I've given uh, in the bottom left. And what you might be surprised to see now is that we have four out of five mismatches. So given that I've uh, added a date, you might be pretty surprised by that because there is a date in this file. I've told Syntex that it's looking for a date. So why hasn't it picked out uh, this particular date? And this reinforces, hopefully, the, uh, the idea that we're not building regular expressions or query statements. These are, in the same way that you teach a person, hints at how to find the right data. In this case, I've told Syntex that it's a date it's looking for, but there's no context here to say which date in this file am I looking for. How do I know this is the effective date rather than the date the document was written? So to do that, we apply additional explanations. What I'll do is again, I'll use a, a template. And what we have um, as a recent release over the last couple of months is something called an automatic template. So this is where we can look at the training set that we've got and understand what are the common phrases that appear before or after the entities. I'll grab the before label, which will look across all my data in my training set and see what are the phrases that appear before the label um, in each of those files and build out an explanation list for me. I'll add that to my model. And we're closer. We're at 80% accuracy now. So four out of my five files have have identified the correct uh, entity. We've got the green and the blue highlights matching. If I look at my mismatch though, what we can see is that it thinks there's an effective date in the statement of work. So we need to give additional cues, additional linguistic clues and hints to the AI in order for it to um, disambiguate. So again, we can add more explanations either using the automatic phrase lists or, or manual phrase lists. So again, let me grab the automatic phrase list for the after label. We now have um, accuracy across all of my five test files. Expand out, look at the rest of the training set. And then finally, we can publish this to a, a SharePoint library. Now I'm going to cheat for time and go to an example that I created earlier on. So this is using the same test set, but I've created a number of more, a number of more extractors here as well. Uh, now, in order to manually publish this to a SharePoint library, I just select apply model find the uh, particular site that I want to publish to, and then publish to a specific document library. So in this case, benefit changes. Once I've done that, what's automatically happened here behind the scenes is we've created a few things. So we've created columns on the library based on the extractors that I have uh, in the model. So in this case, for provider, for effective dates, uh, discount and, and notice stressy, and so on. We've also created a new view for this document library. Um, so we've um, changed the default view to be one based on benefit changes, the model I've created, um, which shows all those columns as well as the content type and the confidence score and classification date time, which are um, additional system columns we generate within uh, SharePoint syntax. Now, over the next uh, couple of minutes, these files will process and we'll see the uh, the results uh, from that. It generally takes between two and 10 minutes for content to be processed through, uh, through SharePoint Syntax. I'll show you an example of one I made earlier, which shows all of the metadata that's been automatically extracted from each of those files, the confidence the Syntax, ha Syntax had in extracting that, and the timestamp of when the, uh, the extraction ran. Thanks, James. Uh, great demo. Uh, really showed uh, how you can uh, build the model and, and uh, how configure how to tweak it, how to kind of start from scratch. Mm -hmm.